To convert from x degrees Celsius to y degrees Fahrenheit, we use the formula f of x is equal to 9 fifths times x plus 32. Find the inverse function if it exists and explain its meaning. All right. So first thing is, uh, I'm going to try to uh, simplify this just ever so slightly. In other words, um, instead of using f of x is equal to 9 fifths x plus 32, how I'd like to view this is I want to change this to y. Okay, I want to change it to y, because basically that's what it represents. So if I just simply now take this and make it into a, turn it into a y. Now you might look at this and say, well, isn't there an x in there? And I'm going to say yes, but this represents a function of x, and y is a function of x, meaning as x changes, so does this value, right? So instead of writing f of x and having an x in there already, it just looks a little confusing to me. So I'm just going to turn it into a single letter, okay? That's all turning into a single letter. So this is now 9 fifths times x plus then 32. Now what they mentioned here is that x represented Celsius degrees and y represented Fahrenheit. Okay, so instead of maybe using x, uh, excuse me, well that's a y Andrew, instead of using y and x, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in the letter c and the letter f. Just because I think once we do or find the inverse function, all right, I think it's going to be easier to interpret. All right, so the y value they said represented Fahrenheit, so capital F, and the x value here represented Celsius, right, or capital C. So what this function means right now is that, what it means right now, no inverse, no nothing, is that if I know the Celsius temperature, if I know the Celsius temperature, I can figure out the Fahrenheit temperature just by doing a little math, right? Zero degrees Celsius, you know is going to be 32 degrees Fahrenheit, right? This is the freezing temperature of water in Celsius, and 32 is the freezing temperature of water in Fahrenheit. So when you plug in zero here, what happens to this whole term? Oh, bye-bye. And what happens when you take zero and add it to 32? Oh, you get 32. So what that means is that the Fahrenheit temperature is 32 when the Celsius temperature is zero, and that's what we just talked about. So let's find the inverse of this. Okay, what's the inverse? What does that mean? It means just take the F and switch it with the C, okay? Take the variables and switch them. So now let's clean this up ever so slightly. All right, let's move this on front and center. Boom, and now let's do it like this. So this becomes the C, and this becomes now the F. Okay, now all we have to do now, so this, this is fine, right? This is the inverse function, okay? Now what does this represent? Does this represent now <clears throat> the Celsius temperature when we know the Fahrenheit temperature? Well, you might say, well, yeah, sure, we just switched them around, right? So doesn't that mean that? Well, not exactly, right? Because if the Fahrenheit temperature is 32, and you plug in 32 here, this whole side does not become zero. So that's obviously it's not true, right? If you just switch these two around, it doesn't represent that if you plug in the Celsius temperature and you plug in the Fahrenheit temperature, uh, you know, or if you plug in the Fahrenheit temperature that you'll solve for the Celsius temperature is not true, okay? What I'm going to do is I have to find the F value, meaning what I need, to, in order to compare this original function to this new one, this inverse function, I want to get them to be, like, look very similar. In other words, if this one is solved for F already, then I want to solve this for F. I don't want it to be solved for C, okay? So how do we solve this for F? Well, what we simply have to do is subtract the 32 from both sides, Subtract the 32 from both sides. And now here we're going to get C minus 32, right, is equal to 9 fifths. Oh, sorry. It's just the, uh, yep, yep, that's it. Yep, just the uh, just the waste waste management. That's all. Don't worry. Nothing, nothing to be alarmed at. Okay. And uh, here we got to now solve this for F. So what do we have to do? Well, you can divide out the 9 fifths or you can... It's the same thing. You can multiply both sides by 5 ninths. Okay, it doesn't really matter. So multiply both sides by 5 ninths. Okay, when that happens, this cancels. It leaves me with F is equal to 5 ninths times then the Celsius temperature minus 32. Okay, so how do we now do this? Well, not how do we, I'm just thinking about how do I, I'm just going to rewrite it now because nobody really likes to have the F on the, uh, right side, right, the variable on the right side. Uh, 
So now what we're going to do is let me just pull this on over to the side and let me just write it now down. Okay. So this now represents f is equal to 5 ninths c minus 32. So these are obviously non-identical formulas. Okay? They're not identical formulas. And the question now becomes is what is the relationship between these two? Remember this was the inverse, uh, excuse me, uh, this was the original, and this is then the inverse function. All right, so what is the significance, right? Explain its meaning. Explain the meaning now of this inverse function. So what does this function represent? Well, remember, this technically is an f. It's technically the inverse, okay, of f. So if you check out, and this also doesn't really, it's really the inverse, okay? So if you remember from our prior uh, lessons here that we've had, if you look back at the playlist, whatever my... If the top, actually, if the top one represents, I'll leave that in. If the top one here, if this was my, you know, x value, basically, and this is my y, right, it would have been c, f, something like that in terms of the coordinates, then what happens in the bottom function here is that my f value becomes the new c value, basically, and the old c value becomes the new f value. So what's happening here is that technically, this is not f, this is the inverse of f, but the inverse of f is really c. So in other words, this is really, in comparing it to the original, this is really the original c. And this one right here is not c technically, it's the inverse c, it's the original f. So guess what now? When I look at this, if I rewrite it now that way, now, by the way, this is not technically, well, technically, in, in terms of moving variables around, it is. So this is f now minus 32. Okay? It's f minus 32. Now, this will make sense, right? If the Fahrenheit temperature is 32, then what is Celsius? It should be zero. Well, if you plug in 32 there, what do you get? Celsius of zero, and that's 5 over 5. That's not correct. That's 5 over 9. If you know water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, so plug in 212 minus 32, that's about 180, multiplied by 5 ninths, you're going to get zero, uh, not zero, 100, okay? So this should make sense now, all right? Essentially what happens is this. Um, if I started with my original function, f is equal to 9 fifths Celsius plus 32, and I solve this for c, right? Pretend you got to solve it for c. So you subtract the 32 from both sides, right? You get F minus 32 is equal to nine over five Celsius. Multiply them both sides by five over nine, right? To get rid of that. So it's gonna be five over nine times F minus 32 is equal to C. Make it look nice, write the C on the left-hand side, five ninths times F minus 32. And you might say, wait a second, isn't that the same thing as this? And I'm gonna say, yes. <laughs> So what happens when you take the inverse, or what happens when you do this inverse thing? Basically what you're doing is you're solving the equation for the other variable. All right, that's what's happening. So guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, please help us out by subscribing if you can, and I look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.